Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Instagram and Facebook Live here on Monday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. I hope everyone's having a great day today. And I'm looking forward to uh, being with you guys today on this amazing uh, Monday. I'll tell you, we're moving into spring and then into summer, and it's going to be just an amazing season. I believe that. Spiritually and naturally, I believe it's going to be awesome. And you know, before I get into my uh, my subject today on our brand new book for the month of April, I want to say this to you. You know, I know naturally how we have natural seasons seasons, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall. But I think sometimes a lot of people don't realize we do go through spiritual seasons that deal with winter, spring, summer, fall. Because a lot of times we go through seasons where things are blooming, things are evolving, things are growing, and then we go through times where we need pruning. Things are sort of dying back, you know, and in the winter, if you notice how, you know, certain trees or bushes will die back, they'll lose its luster, they'll lose its its color, they'll lose its leaves, and, and then you'll see it where it looks almost like it's dead, but yet the life is in the root system, and so I wanted to sort of bring that out today, because I don't know who that's for, but many of you, I think, sometimes suffer from not knowing exactly that we have what we call spiritual seasons, and, uh, and I think sometimes it's easy to um, see that as buzzwords, and we end up taking advantage of that, you know, thinking, um, well, you know, we have seasons, but we never stop to realize on the subjects, <clears throat> excuse me, the subjects of things dying back, you know, sometimes looking like we're dead, you know, almost like a zombie, like in the wintertime, but yet knowing also that the life is in the roots. And I love that because when you get into winter, this winter, for example, in Alabama, we, you know, Alabama gets um, maybe, you know, 30 degrees, uh, 20s possibly, but we had it where it was uh, like down to, I think like seven degrees, you know, at one point, and it was, it lasted for days. Well, it, and, the, and the record hasn't been lasting that long for days, I think until like 1987 or 1988. But you know, usually if it if it goes that if it goes that that low, it might last a day to where everything doesn't really you know sort of freeze to death. But we had a lot of things that actually you know died, things that have been growing for 20, 30, you know, 40 years were actually dead. You know, and I'm still looking at our bushes sometimes around the house. I'm like, are you going to come back to life? You know. But then you look at them sometimes and you think, you know what? It looks like they're not going to come back. And, and then, lo and behold, you get a day that's maybe a spring day, and all of a sudden you see those little buds begin to come up, and you're like, wow, wait a minute, you know, I'm shocked, like, there is a life in this thing. I mean, I, you know, I, it looked like it was dead, it didn't make it, it was, you know, and it made it. And so with that said, it, it means that sometimes other people, and I believe this is for many people right now, I'm sort of prophesying right now to some of you as God lays in my heart. I think a lot of times many people look at us and they might say, there's no life in you. Or maybe you can't do that. You know, you're not young enough. You're not old enough. You're not the right color, not the right age. Don't come from the, you know, the right side of the tracks, you know, whatever the case may be. But yet it's not up to everybody else to tell us if we're alive or dead. Think about that. It's not up to everybody else to tell us that we don't have the life to accomplish a mission or to be able to watch this vision of God come to pass. No one has that right except for you and God. Because if you think about it, if I look at some bushes and I say, they're dead. Like, they're, I mean, there's no life in them. You know, there's nothing, no buds, nothing. And then if I begin to slowly, you know, cut it, but if I say, well, wait a minute, let's just wait and see. And let's say maybe days later, a week later, if we have a good spring, you know, day, then all of a sudden these little buds start, start popping up, start popping up. And so what happens is Jeremy judge it from the outside. And a lot of times we can judge things, even our lives, you know, from the outside, because if other people will judge us, because the Bible says man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. And a lot of times people will judge us according to what they're seeing and feeling, not actually knowing prophetically by talking to us or knowing prophetically what God has spoken to them to say, you know what, I believe you can do this task. It doesn't look like you can in the natural, but I know you can. But nine times out of ten, most of the time, it is up to us to say, I know if I'm alive or not, right? I know there's life in me. And so a lot of times you have to look at yourself and say, I know that there is a life in me. Thank you so much um, for buying that badge. I appreciate that. You guys can buy badges if you want to. It helps us out financially. But you know, a lot of times people look at that and, and, and we don't realize that it doesn't matter what other people see about us. What matters is what we say. That bush out there knows if there's life in the roots. It knows if it's still alive or not, right? I mean, pretty much. And yet with me looking on the outside of it, I can say, but there's no life. But yet the thing is the power of God is alive within the root system. 
and, and roots grow deep, and that's where they pull their nourishment from. So knowing that, it's sometimes easy for us to look at somebody and say, you can't do that. You're not educated enough. You can't do that because of this. You're too tall. You're too short. You're too overweight. You're too underweight. You know, you're the right wrong color. I mean, we look at this and we judge them, but yet we never stop to realize they know the life in them. And I always say this, if you don't know the life in you, then somebody else will impregnate you with a life that they want you to have right? And so because of that, you've got to know the life within inside of you. And if you know the life inside of you, that's why the Bible says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You know, if, if I, you have to know the Christ is in you. You have to know what is in you. You have to know what is you're capable of doing. And knowing that, it, what that's what matters, and then your action is going to come out. But if you're sort of, you know, swayed by everyone of doctrine, then you'll never find the, the, the true power in you to say, I know I can do this. You know, everybody else might not say I can, but I know I can do this. I know that I can accomplish this mission. And so always remember that. So if you have a vision from God, before I get into the book today, if you have a vision from God, always know that it's not up to everyone else to see your vision. In fact, probably nine times out of ten, no one will see your vision. And you can just try and try and try, but this is my vision, this is my vision, this is my vision. You know, and you can lay it out on a, you can lay it out and map it out, but, but a lot of times people just won't get it. The reason why it's not always always because they don't have an eye to see and an ear to hear, which nine times out of ten, that's the case, is maybe they don't have an eye to see or an ear to hear. However, a lot of times God will withhold it from them because it's not their vision. It's not their vision to begin to understand that concept, to really grasp that you know, it's not my vision to carry out. So why should I care if I see it or not, right? Now, we love people so we, and we care, so we would like to see it. But if we don't see it, it doesn't mean that, you know, that person's ignorant or like, oh, you know, they don't love me because they can't see my vision. It just means sometimes God will withhold something from somebody because it's not their baby to carry. It's like me saying, you know, it's it's like, for example, uh, you know, if let's, uh, okay, Janika, let's use you for a, for a moment. Let's use my friend Janika. Let's say, for example, if you know uh, if she's you know married and pregnant and she's carrying a baby, she's not going to go around. She's not going to say, "Hey, do you mind carrying this baby for a week?" Like I'm really tired of carrying it. Can you hear? Can you carry it? You know, in your in your womb for a week, it's like humanly impossible to transfer a baby right from a womb to womb, and it's humanly impossible to be able to have somebody else carry that in the sense of when you're when it's already in sort of festered in you. You know what I mean? You're already carrying it. You're five months pregnant. And so it's the same thing that when you know that you're pregnant with something of God, you can't expect everybody else to know it. In fact, if you notice when people go to the doctor, you know, there's no way the woman can go to the doctor without finding out what kind of baby it was, male or female. You know, in other words, the, the aunt can't go to the doctor and says, hey, I'm just curious to know uh, like uh, what, what baby my niece is having or, or what, uh, you know, a gender my niece is having. Well, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I'm not your niece's doctor, you know, for one for another, I won't be able to tell if I don't do a sonogram on her, you know, so I can't tell you without her being present, right? And so you have to be the baby carrier. You have to be the visionary, the vision carrier, because other people will never get that. And because of that, sometimes you have to find out what the gender is. In other words, you have to find out exactly which, what vision God's given you first and foremost before you decide to tell everybody else. So you have to know it first. But if you don't know it, other people will try to prophesy that vision on you or sort of try to speak into your life and say, I think you should be singing in the choir. I, I think you should be starting this business. I think you should be doing this. And because of that, their opinions will mess you up worse until you say, look, I know I'm having a baby girl. I know I'm having a baby boy. And I know I'm supposed to own a, you know, a veterinarian. I know I'm supposed to be a doctor. I know I'm supposed to be a janitor. I'm supposed to be a full-time mother. Whatever the case may be, you've got to know it first. If you don't know it, trust me, other people the enemy will see to the other people will put their vision in you of what they feel, what they think you should be doing. And they will go by the outside and not by the inside because you should know the inside more than anybody. No one should ever know what's inside of you unless you tell them or and, and or you're living it out. But no one can speak into you that and, and say that they know what's in you when they don't, right? And of course, prophets probably could, you know, but you see what I'm saying? And so that's where we have to begin to understand the whole dynamics of exactly knowing what we're carrying. Now, with all that said... With all that said, I wanted to throw that out there because I feel like it's for somebody today. With all that said, I want to talk about the book today because the book of the month is one that I know every one of you. Exactly. Thank you so much for that, man. Thank you, Rise. I appreciate it. You know, one of the things that every one of you, every one of us, 
I should say, have asked before in our lives. Because I'm in the same boat you're in, and that is until I sort of had the revelation to understand exactly the answer of what this question is. And so this month's book is called, Why Didn't God Answer My Question? Why Didn't God Answer My Question? So this is why I named it this. Why Didn't God Answer My Question? Because this book is really taking the world by storm right now because we have had so many people that have asked me the question, I don't understand. I write in for a question, God doesn't answer my question. First of all, let me just say this to you. Number one, God is not required to answer a question. He's not a, a genie in a bottle, okay? You can talk to Christina Aguilera about that part, but God is not a genie in the, genie in the bottle, right? And so because of that, you have to understand that God is not a magic. He's not into, he doesn't work for you. He's not your boss. And, you know, and so because of that, you have to begin to, first of all, number one, God is not required to tell you anything that you're questioning because of the fact, and this is just one tiny little point in the book that, I, that I'm going to bring out today, and that is this. Because we have to remember God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God is ahead of the game. He's ahead of you. He knows your ending from the beginning. And because of that, it's not the fact maybe you're asking the wrong question or the right question because you actually could be answering or uh, asking the wrong question. And maybe God is wanting to tweak that question to where you present the correct question. You know, it's almost like saying no questions are dumb. You know, all questions are welcome. That's 100% true. However, God will a lot of times, you know, and just once again, this is like maybe a 5% of the other 195 out of the 100% in the book written. But I'm going to give you a little 5% today. And that is, number one, God is not required to tell you anything, okay? Uh, number two, the thing is that the question could be needing to be tweaked. Maybe you're asking the wrong question in that season or maybe in that time frame because maybe if you got the answer God wanted you to have from that question, it could mess up your future. You know, I'll tell you a great example. Um, so last night, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, what was the name of the movie I watched last night? Oh my goodness. It was on, um, I think it's Netflix or Amazon. But anyway, but it dealt with... Um, which it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll tell you guys later on. But it dealt with basically, um, it was a beautiful love story, but it dealt with that in the future that we could have these time waves, which means somebody could go into the past and they could they could change the time. And it was this, this guy and girl who was madly in love and, and she even felt like, you know, what if... Um, you know, what if, and he said, what if your ex could go back and change because he wants you back? And so his ex, her ex actually did that, went to the past, changed it, and, and when he woke up, he barely remembered her for a moment, but yet she had no recollection and she was already with him. So th so it already shifted. So, so then this guy had to go back in the past. So without me telling you the whole movie, it was the understanding of... You know, when you deal with these kind of questions, that it messes up your future. If you go back and you try to correct something in the past, and every movie we've ever seen, I'm a huge sci-fi guy anyway, but every movie you've, you'll ever watch on dealing with, if you could go back in the past in a time machine to change something, and you think, yes, I could change this, and I could make it turn out right, you will always mess up something else right and so because everything in the universe is connected i mean all energy is connected so because of that you have to remember that if i was to mess up one person then i'll have to get the name of it because you will love it love it love it love it love it um Jenica. And so, you know, uh, it's on Netflix, by the way. I'll find the name of it for you. But anyway, but if you think about it, you know, you might think that your part is right, but you've messed up everybody else in the domino effect, right? That was supposed to be here and here and here and here. And so a lot of times when you ask God a question, you have to remember that if we say, well, God, why didn't you do this for me? Why didn't, you know, this guy marry me? Why didn't this girl ma not marry me? Why didn't, you know, my, why didn't I have this job? You know, God, why didn't you answer the question I'm asking you? We have to remember that life, this is going to sound funny, but I'm being honest, life is not about us. I mean, you know, it, it, we, I don't mean this bad, but sometimes as, as believers, we make life so very self-centered and selfish because it's like, it's all about me, all about me. Why didn't you answer my question, God? But we never stop to look from a God point of view to say, okay, well, if I do this for you, then that means I'm going to have to undo this, undo this, undo this, redo this, do this, do this, do this, connect this dots here. So it's not like you're saying, but God, I'm just asking a question for me. Why can't I get that job? And God's like, well, first of all, let, I'll have to take that person out of the position you're asking for, which means then I'll have to deal with him and his wife not having a job, which they probably have kids. So that's going to affect the kids probably if I'm going, let's say, to a public school, private school, whatever, and it would affect her. That means because she would have to get another job to support him. And in the meantime, if he doesn't have that job, and then he'll have to find another job. 
And then the manager of uh, the current manager of that guy, right, will have to be over here to line up to make sure that you get it. So it's not all about like you. And I think sometimes we don't stop to realize because we're very selfish people. The human race is very selfish. And that is, we don't stop to realize that if God answers one question, which he loves, no good thing we, we withhold from us. But sometimes a question can be wrongly asked because we're not thinking outside of ourselves, of the me syndrome, thinking how many other people would this affect? And you might say, well, I just wish I, you know, this is going to sound ridiculous, but you might say, I just wish, I don't know why on earth I just, you know, I can't have a steak dinner tonight. You know, just, I know this is a weird question, but you have to think, okay, what restaurant does God want you to be at? Which means it would affect the server, which means it would affect the, you know, the cook. It would affect the people. You know, I mean, you know, you don't know what all, then it would affect the people at the table that you need, you, you would want to sit at, that normally will be sitting there. I mean, so you never stop to realize life is not about you. It's about, thank you, the bigger picture. It's, you took the words out of my mouth here. It's about life in general affecting thousands. I mean, every, you know, you're affecting, you know, hundreds of people when one decision is changed or altered and you might think well no i'm affecting just me or just affecting one person you're not because that person's connected to somebody else it's connected to somebody else so the idea here is we have to understand is you were asking the wrong question you know god why didn't you answer my question when we should be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove to say god let me try to think that question through because if i was to ask you the question god why didn't you answer my question god what happens is, what, let me ask you an honest question, every one of you. What do you think, what emotion and what feeling would I get if I approach and say, God and say, why didn't you answer that question, God? I begged you, why didn't you answer that question? Who wants to start? Uh, uh, let's see, frustrated, confused, disoriented, um, doubting, probably get mad at God, get mad at myself. Uh, you know, get mad at life, take it out on somebody else. I mean, imagine all the, the negative feelings and emotions that that one question comes with. So instead of, you know, saying, why didn't you answer my question, God? You know, I ask, I wrote, and this is the, this is the key thing people ask me, you know, is, uh, you know, um, is this. And by the way, Pamela, it just hit me. It just hit me. I need to do, yeah, anyway. I need to do that word I said uh, about somebody for Friday. I just got to remind me about that. But but it just hit me uh, on, a lot of things hit me. A lot of things just hit me. But, um, but one of the things we don't realize is it hits you, how can I say this? It hits you in the moment when you realize that when I'm asking God, why didn't you answer my question, that all these other things will come upon you because you cannot ask that kind of question and not have a heap of emotion and negativity and doubt coming upon you because what, here's my thing, what, I need you to get that. What if, what if God was to say to you when you say, God, why didn't you answer my question I ask you, which I'll get to my prophetic words in a minute. What if God was to look down and say, because I'm giving that position, that promotion to Laura. I'm giving that position and that promotion to, you know, Henry over here. And all of a sudden, let me ask you an honest question. Now, what, what, now where would that leave you in that answer? Well, why did you do that, God? Why did you give Henry or Elizabeth that, you know, promotion? What about me? You see what, see what I'm saying? So, so it spirals down into everything that's negative. And so when people say, I just want to know, I just want to know an answer. I want somebody to say, no, you don't. You don't have to know an answer to everything because you're not thinking clearly and straight to think that if, will that, will the question God answer with it, you know, with me, will that bring me true peace? Will it bring me, you know, because God will bring you something that will bring you peace. He's not going to throw, some, you know, something into the gear and just, and cause you to be like spiraling down even worse. So you got to think, is this the right proper question I need to ask? One. Number two, will, could I, or, or really, what answer would really be effective that I think God would say to me that would really bring me peace? Because if I was to say, if God was to say, I'm giving this promotion to Sarah, I'm giving, you know, um, Henry, Laura to Mary, not you. I'm giving this job to Elizabeth and not you. Any of those answers are not, you're not going to, let's face it, none of these answers are going to find you guys saying, oh, well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. No, you're going to be like, what about me? What am I, chopped liver? I am the one that prayed, God. I'm the one that deserves it. I'm the one that asked you. I'm the one more experienced. I'm the one that's loved her. I'm the one that wanted him. You know, I mean, that's the kind of, and God is, you know, probably like, I need a V8, you know? Remember those commercials? Man, I, need, I should have had a V8. But, you know, so God would, you know, think about the, the position that would put you in. It would put you in a <coughs> a worse position because they're not they're they're not effective answers until you understand. Wait a minute, 
I need to walk this thing through. So let's get back to prophetic words. Do I like when people ask me questions in prophetic words? Not really. I understand, but you have to also remember, God is never going to leave you empty-handed. He's never going to leave you at a place where, you know, it's past the midnight hour and say, oh man, since you didn't ask me the question, Jeremy, I didn't give you an answer, and now you're really screwed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, think about it. God is not going to say that to you, right? He's not. He's never going to be like, oh man, I forgot to answer, you know, Jeremy's, you know, prayer request. Man, no. And so if you think about it, asking questions to God in a prophecy, for example, is not always the best because sometimes God has given me prophetic words to give to people that actually won't even answer the question. And yet I, I can't allow it to frustrate me because I can't manipulate the situation to say, you know, okay, God, so-and-so is asking this question, so you have to answer this question. You know, it's not like God says, yes, sir, Jeremy, according to what you want, I'll do it, right? God will sit here and say, you know what, son, since my ways are higher than our ways, I'm not going to answer that question exactly, but I might sort of work around it to make this person think in a bigger picture or maybe to think outside of the box that they've placed themselves in because they're asking this question. Can questions being asked put you in a box? Absolutely they can. Because when we sit here and we say, God, why didn't I get this job position? Why didn't I get it? Because in my in our minds, here's what I do. Pride's gonna rise up and raise up. It's gonna say, because I'm worth it. I've been there longer. I'm more experienced. I'm better looking. You know, I'm louder. I, I, you know, I have more personality. I mean, you, you know, ego is going to pop up because because no one in the right mind is going to say, you know, Lord, why didn't you give me that position? Because I'm ugly. I can't. I'm, I can't think straight. I, you know, I'm dumb as a mud fence. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, nobody's going to tell themselves that. Let's just be real about it. I know that's funny, but no one's going to sit here and say that. Everybody's going to be like, well, I'm the one qualified. I'm the one that's been here longer because the ego loves to come forward when we ask a wrong question question to God because we know that the pride is backing up the question. Well, I, you know, and so it's almost like God saying, oh, well, I didn't even know you're more qualified. I didn't know that you're better looking. I didn't know that you're fit for the job. I didn't know that you have a stronger personality. What was I thinking? You know, I mean, you know, and so God is never going to do that, right? And so you have to remember that you're not asking a question to a human being. You're asking a question to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who deserves respect to know, you know, God, what's better for me, what's best for me. So when we, can we approach God with a potential? Petition? Yes, but here is a beautiful thing about petition, okay? I try to be. I, I, I really don't even try to be funny. I'm just trying to be real and me and me. Not mean, but me. Uh, so here's the question we have to ask, and that is this. Okay, Lord, so when, you, you, when your word says, make your petition known to me, bring your petition known to me, the word petition I said last week, petition actually is like a written form that actually has been viewed by different people. Look it up. If you look, in fact, let me just do that real quick for you guys, okay? Let's do this just for a split moment. Give me a second. And let's go to the word petition, okay? Make your petition known. So a petition is this. Let's see here. Oh, that's actually a website. Okay. A petition is this. A formal written request. Hear me out, which means you know, you know what you're talking about, what you're asking for. Typically one signed by many people. <laughs> many people appealing to authority with respect to a particular cause. Let me say it again. When it, the Bible says make your petition known, petition means this, a formal written request, typically one signed by many people in the counts of me, there's wisdom, appealing to an authority with respect to a particular cause. What does that mean? It means you have ran it through a council of your buddies, your friends, your pals, your best friend, your wife, your husband, to say, is this question okay to ask, or do you think, what do you think about me getting that position? Honest and truthfully, you know, and don't ask people that are, that are yes people. Do you ask people that are going to be honest with you? Because when you have that written that written form, which means, I, you know, you're really knowing what question to ask because you thought it through, number one. Number two, you've made it known to the council, and council, once again, can be your husband, your wife, even your daughter or son, you know, because trust me, kids will be more critical with you to say, because mom, you don't deserve that, or you, should, you deserve to be over here, mom. You know, where, you know, I mean, sometimes they're like a little too blunt, you know, I mean, so it's like, okay, you can hush now, you know, but, or maybe your best friend, or maybe your pastor, or maybe your girlfriend's in a meeting of intercession. I don't know. But the key thing is, it's talking about many. So if I was to sit here in my single mindedness and say, why did I get this position, God? I deserve it. 
Okay, he, he, everything follows with a question. I mean, pride always follows with this question. Why did I get it? I'm qualified. I've been there longer. You know, Karen doesn't deserve it. She hasn't been there three months, and I've been there five years, God. Pride. I'm smarter than her than she is. Pride. I know more God than she does. Pride. I have, you know, I, you know, I'm more personality. I got a personality. She just sits there all day and does nothing. Pride. Right. And so, so think about it. You're asking a question that's probably the wrong question to ask to God, out of pride and ego, and then you expect the magic genie in a bottle to answer your question for you because we don't stop to think, you know what, maybe we're in pain, maybe we're in desperation, maybe we're in a woundedness of why we're asking the question. So because of that, we want to be sensitive to say, you know what, in all honesty, away from, this, from, the, from the humor I'm trying to bring forth today, in all honesty, out of respect, it might be your last resort. It might be, I'm desperate, Jeremy. I, I've got to have this answered. You know, it, but one thing we have to also remember is this, out of pain, out of woundedness, out of rejection, the wrong questions usually do appear out of these. Why did he leave me? Why did she abandon me? And, and those are, are valid questions. However, with those questions, they're going to be spoken out of woundedness. So they're not always going to be the best questions to ask. Does that make sense? And knowing that we have to remember Okay, I'm in pain, I'm wounded, I've been rejected, or maybe this hurt me. So my question might be narrowing down out of my pain of what I just experienced versus seeing a bigger picture, taking a breather, sitting on this for a couple of days, and thinking about it for a while. And before I ask this question to God, I might get more revelation on it because everything in the universe unfolds, evolves like a flower, it begins to unfold. So I'll, I'll get a broader part, part of the uh, perspective of that question that out of my woundedness I want to ask now, but when, I, but when a couple of days when I sit on it, see la, ponder on it, it'll broaden and I'll have a better scope of the proper question I want to be able to ask and maybe through this, I can, I can approach my wife, my husband, my best friend, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my pastor, my kids, if they're smart and wise and older, <laughs> hello, you know, or whatever. Then you're able to say, okay, I've sort of bounced this off, let, you know, off other people. Now I can bring my petition before the Lord. Because if you're speaking out of woundedness, it's always going to be the wrong question. And understand that. It doesn't mean it's the wrong question of you sort of looking and saying to yourself, you know, does God not care if I'm wounded? Sure he does. God loves to heal the broken heart. However, the question out of woundedness, hurt, or rejection will not always be the right question because you're asking it from a motive of pain and not a motive of wisdom. Does that make sense to many of you? And so you want to be able to always, you're sitting on something, okay? And by the way, I always say, if you guys want to buy badges today to donate, that would be awesome. People on Facebook are like, huh? What are you talking about? That basically is, is badges on Instagram where you can sort of donate if you want to a couple dollars or whatever and those of you on um, Facebook you're welcome to do the same exact thing if you want to so through that you've got to begin to think about this to realize what am I actually needing to ask what is the what is the right question to ask that will not maybe hurt me any worse okay because it's spoken out of a pain and I know really any answer that I feel God would could give me is really not gonna make me feel better so maybe I need to sit on this for a while one of the things I've realized, and the chapter I wrote in this book is really good because it talks about something. And once again, literally, I'm talking like 2% of this whole book today, you guys. So don't, don't expect to say, hey, now I know. Why? Get the book. Buy the book or download the ebook today. You will be glad you did, and it'll help you, I promise you, the rest of, my, rest of your life. But one of, the, one of the chapters in this book of why didn't God answer my question is actually this. First of all, um, it's called Beyond the Answer, Beyond the Answer, because you've got to remember, answers do not set you free. Truth sets you free. Answers do not set you free. I just need an answer. I need an answer. No, you don't. You don't need an answer. You need truth to set you free through the pain, through the rejection, and, and, and truth will also go through your ego and, and eradicate that ego and eradicate the pride to where it's actually bringing you something that is not just soothing you, making keeping you whole, but it sets you free and you never will approach that question again. Here's one of the things I'll give you, I'll give you a good answer on. If if you find yourself, are you, are you ready? This is gonna be this is gonna be the, the principle of, I think of the year for many of you. If you find yourself asking a, the same question to God over and over and over again, okay? Are you ready for this one? 
and you feel as if you're getting an answer from the Lord, but you find yourself re-asking the question, let me tell you something. That means you're not getting truth because truth would eradicate the question and you will never care to ask that question again. Because if you're getting an answer from God through the question, answers mean you're not free from it yet. If God chooses to give you an answer, which is going to be, let me tell you, which is going to be line upon line, precept upon precept, which means God is going to walk you through your pain sometimes by giving you little snippets of answers to get you to the place of the truth. So if you're asking just questions and you find yourself asking the same question over and over again, just remember it's not truth penetrating you because if it was, you would never ask the question again, right? So if it's not settled in you and you're asking that question again, something might not be right, okay? Maybe it could be the wrong question. And maybe God is just saying, look, you you know, if, if I'm just giving you little answers here, you got to remember, if it's not setting you free in truth, then that means it's, it's not the actual fullness of what you need to hear because maybe you can't handle the whole truth right now if I told you from the answer you're asking me. What is the old movie? You know, um, you can't handle the truth. You know, I mean, that's, I, can, I can't do that as good as other people. But that's a key thing, you know, is not always, not everybody can handle the full truth right now. Oh God, just tell me, just tell me. And God's like, you don't, wonder, you don't understand. It would mess up your future if I told you. It would hurt you worse. Truth can be painful, you know. Uh, it'll, it could mess you up worse because truth is a weapon and it's potent. So don't expect, I can handle anything, God. No, and God's like, no, honey, you can't. You just think you can. You can't right now. You're too much in pain. You're too desperate. Your pride is still there, or your woundedness is still there, or whatever the case may be. So remember, let God talk to you when God wants to talk to you, as God chooses to talk to you, and don't write in for a question, even on prophetic words, and say, God, answer my question. Well, I'm sorry, part of me wants to say, here, let me get my whip and just whip God. God, answer this question. You know, I mean, it's not going to happen because God's like, I say what I need to say because I know the person's heart. I know how fragile they are. I know what they need right now more than they think they need right now. So out of respect and honor, remember, honor your life. Honor and respect your own life, not to feel as if you've got to be able to know it all right now. No, you don't. You don't. And sometimes we don't, we're not even aware of the state of emotion or, or the state of our soul is in right now. You see what I'm saying? And so we have to remember that he knows how fragile we are more than we think we are. He knows how strong we are more than we think we are. He knows we can handle more than we think we can. You know, and so you have to remember that, you know, God doesn't owe you the answer or the truth, I should say. He doesn't. And so let these, let these things today be therapeutic to you. Let them settle within you and just say, okay, now I'm getting this a lot more now. So, you know, just remember that. It'll bring you peace, all right? So I'm telling you guys, if you're on the, the program, these books uh, hopefully will be on the way uh, here. Today's Monday. We didn't ship them over the weekend, so they should be they shipped out today to, to people in the book program. Book program. But those of you who are not on the program, shame on you. No, I'm kidding. Um, those of you on the program, you can go right now to the what we call the Quickie Link. It's my call. It's called Link, I think Link Tree, but go to the Quickie Link at the top of Instagram, click on that, and my amazing, wonderful friend that I love dearly, Pamela, has orchestrated for you guys to when you click on that at the top of the Instagram, it'll have like the link to this to this book, an ebook. It'll have the link to or book, ebook, whatever. It'll have the link to, I think, a prophetic word. It gives you the quickie links, and you can just click on whatever you need and go straight to what you need on the website. And you can bypass trying to struggle through the whole website if you want to. All right, but go there on 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 Facebook. If you're on Facebook, um, I don't think I don't think we have got a lot. I think we have more people on Instagram today. If you're on Facebook, you know you can always go to the top of the website and do that as well. All right. So you guys have a blessed, wonderful, powerful day today, and hopefully I've shifted some paradigms inside of you to start maybe thinking a little bit of how to ask God and the right questions to ask God. All right. You can approach God with any question. God loves you so extremely much. You, no question is a wrong question. It's just maybe wrong to you because it might not bring the soothing and the satisfaction you're looking for from the answer that you are that you think you need, right? And so just remember, it's not a wrong question of God. There's never a wrong question of God. You can approach God with anything. However, remember what a petition is, and remember it could be a wrong question for you.
All right, maybe not to God, but for you to yourself. Because you always want to make sure you ask the right, yeah, that's right, the link is on Facebook, and it's called Shop on the website. One day I'll remember that, Shop on the website. But that's a key thing you have to remember today, all right? So please, guys, give some badges to download as donations. I appreciate it. And go to where we told you, the quick link on Instagram and the shop on webs on the Facebook uh, identity page and download this today. Why didn't God answer my questions? There's a lot of great chapters in here and I guarantee you at least one, if not two or three qu uh, chapters will just hit you where you are in your life to say, that's what I needed, Jeremy. That's exactly what I needed right there. All right. So I love every one of you. Don't forget, share, 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 comments. Not the singer share. I'm telling you, share comments. Share this, share this today on Instagram and Facebook. Share this today on, you know, with your with your friends and stuff. Everybody on here knows that a lot of people need to hear this right now. Because we all have questions of God. And once we hear this, it'll help set them free. So share this today to your Instagram and your Facebook. Also, continue to comment after we're going off because that helps the algorithms. You can always still continue to give on the badges as well, which is the donations. Don't forget to tune into my podcast on Wednesdays. Um, our, our monthly live prophetic live things at night. We'll tell you a little bit later down the road when we're closer to it, usually around the third week of April on a Wednesday night usually. So I'm looking forward to that as well. You guys, thank you for sharing. You guys have a blessed, wonderful day, and I will talk to all my friends on here soon. God bless.